Okay, good morning everybody. Thank you for coming. I know it's a busy day and appreciate you taking time from your schedule to be here. Uh, before I get started, there's a VIP entry form. Uh, if you haven't filled out one, if you can fill it out, or if you don't have one, uh, they got some in the back. So uh, there's four things that we're offering. Uh, you can check one, two, three, or four. Uh, $100 gift certificate drawing. We're going to empty your uh, form in our drawing that we're going to have at, uh, after the show, which is uh, on Thursday. We have a free uh, book club, book of the month club. You're going to get a free ebook every single month on a building or a construction topic. And uh, I'm, I'm writing all those books, so if I run away after this, I have to continue writing. Also, my company has an educational uh, newsletter, quarterly. You can sign up for that. And then we also have uh, Ask the Building Expert webinars, a free subscription. I do two webinars a month on building and construction related topics. Sometimes it's about real estate, but most times it's uh, construction and uh, building related. So if you want to enter, um, and you know, we're going to capture your email and put it on our database. We don't sell it, we don't uh, do anything else with it. You can opt out anytime you want. I'm not going to cry if I see your name opting out. Uh, so, so that's that. Um, and then also be sure to turn it in in the back there, and then um, we'll, we'll start. So my name is Lance Luke. I'm a construction engineer, and I've been doing uh, construction management for about 42 years now. I probably don't look that old, but I started when I was eight years old. <laughs> so uh, before I, I start, show of hands, I'm just interested. How many of you think the Honolulu Rail Project is too expensive? Anybody? Oh, wow. Okay, I'm for the rail, actually. I'm, I'm for it to be in San Diego. <laughs> and something magical happened to me. I was driving by Nimitz Highway, and I was passing the rail, and something magical happened. My wallet felt lighter. So, you know, the city likes when I tell rail truth. So, oh, also, uh, since you're attending the seminar, at the end you're going to get a free book that I wrote, How Safe Is Your Building, which is the topic of today's seminar. And this book just got released on Amazon.com. If you want to buy it, you can go to Amazon and pay $14.95. If you're Chinese like me and want it free, you stay, and then at the end you'll get a free book, right? If you want an autograph, that's $20. Uh, by the way, um, I'm going to finish my talk early so I can take a lot of questions that you may have. So um, if you can wait at the end, or if you don't want to wait, write your question down on a $20 bill and pass it up to the front. And then I may uh, answer it. So um, that's about the book. Uh, let me advance this here. Okay, so let's go on a little tour of some buildings. So I already have passports for you. I have your global entry pass and we're all set to go. We're gonna, in 30 minutes, we're gonna be going around and checking out some buildings and I'll tell you about safety issues and things to be concerned about. Now, my wife and I just wanna, went on a trip to Italy. We came back in November. From Italy, we flew to New York, and then New York back to Hawaii. Guess what? We got to Hawaii. Our luggage wasn't in Hawaii. We found out it was stuck in New York. But we flew at Delta. Do you know what Delta stands for? Don't expect luggage to arrive. <laughs> so that's, you know, I like Delta. Okay, I gave a seminar uh, last month. Uh, this is my audience, and it looks like they're falling asleep, but that's not me speaking. That's the guy that introduced me. And after that, everybody, like, I don't know what happened. I guess maybe I was boring. But um, we're going to, we're recording this seminar, okay, and uh, we're going to live stream on uh, CNN uh, Property News Network. So don't worry about it. Oh, I also, New Year's resolution. 
Okay, I wanted to lose weight so I look good for the live seminar presentation. So, on January 1st, I decided to go on a three month diet program. So far, I lost two months. <laughs> okay, so I'm here to give you sound advice. 90% sound, 10% advice, but it's, it's all good stuff. You're gonna hear things today and I'm gonna talk about things that will save you time, money, hassles, and maybe lawsuits. I was gonna name the seminar, the title, Four C's, Condos, Contractors, and Crappy Construction. But, any contractors here? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. A recent study, okay, by a mainland group about contractors and it was a contractor's union, okay? and it states that many contractors are alive today because it's illegal to shoot them. Might be like that one. Okay, all right, let's move along. Uh, talk about safety prevent, prevention. Safety prevents accidents, deaths, cost, costly lawsuits. So you want to keep your property and building safe. Okay, that's the main thing. Let's talk about common area exterior. Um, we got uh, high-rise buildings, townhouses, all different types of buildings, could be single-family houses, and what I'm gonna tell you applies to any type of property. Okay, and trip hazards, you walk around your property, you may see uneven stairs, lifted walkways, potholes in the uh, asphalt. Guess what, all these are safety issues. Somebody can trip and fall, and people have, and they sue. They sue the property manager, the building owner, uh, workers, anybody that they can get their hands on. So it's it's not fun. So the main thing is keep your property as well maintained. How about loose, corroded hand railing and guard rail? Okay, you probably see these before. It doesn't have to be on ground. It could be high up on my eyes. I've seen corroded railing on. Um, 38th floor of a condo building, and it's their lanai. And it's so corroded that somebody could actually fall off. And people have died from this. Alamoana railing collapse, if you remember, Alamoana Shopping Center, they had two people fall off the railing. The railing collapsed due to corrosion of the metal, concrete squalling. And one person died and another person was seriously seriously injured. And this is a maintenance and repair situation. It's not like it happened overnight, okay? So when you're maintaining your properties, make sure that you inspect, and if it needs to be repaired, repair it. If it needs to be replaced, you replace it. Let's talk about concrete falling. Watch out for falling rocks. Here I have photos about one eye that was totally demolished because it was very bad. You have another, the middle image is a photo of uh, Lanai Reilly, and at the leading edge, you have a lot of spalls there. And then I took another photo on the right, which is um, a ceiling of a parking lot. All these are un unsafe. Let's move along to parking decks, driveways, uh, potholes, loose gravel, all these are safety slip and trip hazards. Imagine when the asphalt gets all old and loose and there's loose gravel. Can somebody actually slip because the gravel's loose? Yes, they can. And if somebody can slip and get injured, guess what? It may be a major damage and they may want to sue. And you don't want to be at the end of the lawsuit. Common areas. If you look on the left, the picture is really dark, right? It's because there's not enough lighting. And this is a, a parking garage. Can you imagine un, how unsafe it is when people can't see or there may be somebody working in the dark and you don't know that they're there? Uh, if you have common area walkways or lobbies and you're cleaning and mopping and it's wet, make sure you put proper signage floor wet, be careful and all that. And then also, uh, carpet. 
Some buildings, they don't change the carpet. The carpet's loose, it gets rattled up, and people can actually trip over the loose carpet. So that's another unsafe condition. General building components. I'm talking about concrete spalling and cracks. And remember, several years ago, we had that Florida building collapse? That's due to concrete spalling. And the reports haven't come out yet, but um, probably the day after they had that uh, building collapse, I was interviewed on the news, and I just flat out said, it's due to concrete spalling, corroded rebar, waterproofing that was not there or too worn out. I mean, I didn't even know what the situation was. I just saw it on the, on the news and I, I took a wild guess. And later on, I got reports that, sure enough, that condo building was $15 million short of repairs. And $15 million is a lot of repairs, especially in Florida. Okay, back home in Kali, I got called because uh, a wall had collapsed and then, um, two people fell uh, from the second story and got injured. And this is an old apartment building in Kali. And when I went to inspect it, I estimated it was about over $300,000 worth of spalling repair to be done. Why was I there? The news called me and interviewed me, and they said, well, um, how could this happen? And I said, because the building owner didn't maintain the property. Why? Maybe they didn't have money. But is that an excuse? No, especially for condominium projects. Let's talk about roof leaks. You probably heard a lot of leaks, especially now because it's heavy rain, and you don't want roof leaks, especially in a condo building because the owners who live in a penthouse can easily file a complaint to the condo board and the board gets sued. I'm actually working on a case right now regarding that, and I don't want to mention any names, but um, this is what happened. So sometimes I work with roofers and getting the job done. And uh, one roofer said, hey Lance, I heard you wrote a new book. And I said, yeah. I said, well, am I gonna be in your book? And I said, uh, yes, if you do a bad job. <laughs> so um, but hopefully they do, it. they do a good job. And then another contractor, I said, your, your work is junk. I don't accept this work. And he goes, you're full of BS. I don't agree with you. Can I get a second opinion? I said, yeah, you look like a monkey, too. Um, they didn't like me, but that's okay. Okay, show of hands. Any condo board members here? Any condo board? Oh, quite a bit. Any other board members who aren't on condoms? Anybody who's just bored? Okay, good. Not yet. All right. So, let's talk about your building envelope. Your building envelope is the enclosure of the building. So you have four walls if your building is square or rectangle. And then you have a lot of buildings, they build a kakaaka uh, kaka right now. All you see is glass, all windows. But guess what? If they don't seal between the window frame and the concrete wall, guess what? When it rains, you have water infiltration conditions coming in. Right? What happens if water gets into the building? It starts damaging a lot of things, right? And there's a dreaded four-letter word called mold, and then there's toxic mold that may grow. And can you imagine when one unit owner sues the condo for mold? It becomes a big deal, right? So it's all it's all fun. Um, let's talk about. Uh, Electrical, there's old outdated systems. So you condo board members, think about this. When was the last time you had your electrical system in your building inspected? Some may go, uh, never. Oh, I didn't know we had to have an inspection. I thought the electrical lasts 100 years, but it doesn't. The electrical system, may last 35, 40 years. So if your building is older than that, and you have not done electrical inspection, you're overdue already, right? 
So, Martin, who's in the back there helping pass up stuff, um, you know, I said, I'm talking about old systems now. So, uh, speaking of old, I asked Martin, what, what were your good old days, Martin? He goes, oh, um, it was when I wasn't good and I wasn't old. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, but you're still going on a mainland trip, right? He says, yeah, I, I guess so. So, going back to electrical, there's two main breaker brands that are problematic. And let me tell you what those are. Okay, so electrical, defective and dangerous electro, electrical panel boxes, okay? And the brand name is Zinsco and Federal Pacific Electric Stadlock. There's older condo buildings and even Waikiki hotels, apartment buildings, that have these brands. If your building has this brand, then what happens is the breakers are defective. When there's a short or whatever, the breaker doesn't trip, and then when the breaker doesn't trip, that could cause a fire arcing on that. So my advice is to have these boxes replaced with brand new boxes. Okay. Now, it hasn't been an issue where there's a recall because it was political, but in my opinion, you know, it, it should have been a recall. <coughs> How about plumbing? You heard of like old leaking cast iron piping. It's prevalent now in a lot of buildings. How long does, it, does the piping last? 35, 40 years. If your building is older than that, you're overdue already. Or if you keep having leaks, that's a pretty much a no brainer, right? So we call that a DWV project, which stands for Drain Waste Men. And it's not cheap. It could be dollars $30,000, $35,000 per unit. So multiply that figure times the number of units you're building, and then you get the multi million dollar price tag. So a board member once asked me, Can you come to my building and look at my cast iron pipe? And I said, Sure. So I show up and I look and I go, It's really bad. And he said, Well, what can I do? And I said, uh, Use dynamite. And he goes, oh, uh, is it that bad? I said, yes, it is. So, because there's so many bad pipes now, I decided I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the plumbing business now, you know, and make some extra money. So, um, while you're here, I'm starting a new company, so I need a new name and a slogan. So, I'm gonna ask. I came up with two, and I need your opinion. Number one. Casino plumbing, where a royal flush beats a full house. Okay, that one, and then the second one is flush and plumbing. We're number one in the number two business. Okay, so how many for number one? Raise your hand. How many for number two? How many don't even give a crap? Okay, that's fine. All right, thank you. Now, let's talk about uh, more plumbing, galvanized pipe. Okay, so we're talking about piping that is not the sewer pipe. We're talking about when you turn on your water faucet, water comes out. Okay, so it's either galvanized pipe, copper pipe, or plastic piping. Older buildings use galvanized pipe. Guess what? Galvanized pipe corrodes and rusts on the inside. So even if the outside of the pipe looks good, the inside is still bad. It gets clogged, and then your water pressure starts decreasing. Okay. Also, fire sprinkler piping. Older pipes have this problem too. Then the sprinkler heads get corroded. In Hawaii, we got corrosive air, there's a lot of salt in the air, cause really corrosion of any kind of metal. It just, it doesn't matter. The air doesn't decide, oh, uh, it's aluminum, so we're gonna stay away from that and we're just gonna attack the steel. No, they, they don't discriminate, so it's really, really bad. And the plumbing replacement is very costly. It's multi-million dollars for a condo. So, if you guys that are condo owners or condo boards and you don't have the money to reserve, 
you can special assess or you can borrow money from a, a bank. And I know there's this tiny little bank called Bank of Hawaii, and you might want to go to Bank of Hawaii and ask for their rates and all that. I've gotten, just got like, um, last week, a very good rate from Bank of Hawaii for my own condo building. We, we need like $5 million to replace our cast iron piping. So it's the money's, the money's there. Oh, by the way, how many of you board members need money for, for your, your, any of your projects? Anybody? Oh, okay, you in the front. Come up. You need money? I think I have money for you. There you go. There's a million dollar bill. Thank you. <laughs> you can deposit it back in Hawaii and tell them it was from me. Okay? Oh, by the way, speaking of speaking of banks, so this this bank robber, he puts on his mask and he goes to a bank and he robs the bank. Okay. So as he's Running out, his mask falls falls off, and then he puts his mask on and he goes to the security guard. Did you see my mask? And the guard says, "Yeah." Boom! He shoots the guard, and then he sees a a, a a man and a lady, a couple, and he goes to the lady. Lady, did you see see my face? And she goes, "No, but my husband did." <laughs> Let's talk about uh, windows. So if you're in a condo and you have these old jealousy windows that are like floor to ceiling, that's not, not that's not really safe because these glass panels can fall off. And I've been on buildings where I heard glass shatter, I looked up and sure enough, panels are coming loose, the glass slats are loose, the rivets come loose, the clips come loose, and it's becoming dangerous. Okay? Uh, also, you have the, the fact that it's already from the floor, if you have like a kid that will fall through and you're in a 30-story building, that's not, not too safe. Or if you have a low wall, then you have a window. That's not a safe condition either. So if your windows are old, that's another capital improvement project you have to do. So keep that in mind. Okay? So, you know, should you make your, your windows safe? The short answer is yes. The long answer is hell yes. So, I'm all about safety. Moving on to fire life safety. We got uh, fire sprinklers to talk about, fire doors, uh, smoke alarms, uh, emergency signage, all these are a, a factor. Why? Well, remember the big fire that we had, Marco Polo, that was like right down the street, and then more recently, we had the Loe Polo fire. These fires, people actually died in these fires. And I was on site. Marco Polo, I was there. Lady Polo, I was there. And it's, it's a bad situation. So that's why the city is promoting installing fire sprinklers. Now, how much are fire sprinklers? It's very expensive, but we're getting to the point where uh, we might need it because we can't get insurance. Then what? So you gotta weigh the pros and cons. The cost of installing fire sprinklers versus the cost of not having insurance. You go to the secondary market for more expensive insurance or your deductible is $150,000. So it's, it's just a math thing. But you'll find out when you do the math, it probably comes out where it makes sense to actually have fire sprinklers installed. Now, I was giving a lecture in Georgia, fourth year engineering students about fire safety engineering. And I asked the class, okay, what building do you think it's smart to know where the exits are? And one student shouted out, a church. Like, oh, okay. But when I have churches that hire me for construction management, I like it because then I tell people, you know what, I get paid for going to church. Man. Oh, okay. Let's talk about building codes. Is your building code compliant? Wow. We don't know. Maybe it was compliant back in 1972 when our building was built, but it may not be now. But then you say, it's grandfathered in. Well, what does that mean? 
Well, it means that at the time, the conditions met the building code, but today it doesn't meet the building code, but you don't have to fix it because it's, it's not a requirement today. That's called grandfathering, but you know what? Even if it's a grandfathered condition, okay, like let's say you have a hand railing and you're, uh, you have a guard railing and in the pickets, the spaces between the rails are eight, eight inches apart, so a little kid could fall in. That's a grandfathered condition. But even if it's grandfathered condition, they meant to close back then when the building was built in the 70s. If somebody falls through and you get sued, you can't use a grandfathered situation because they're gonna say, so what, you should've. That's why insurance companies are now saying, although it meant the code back then, we still want you to install more tickets. We still want you to raise your hand rim. We want you to fix your windows because it's a safety issue, because there's more and more claims from insurance companies and more and more insurance companies are denying claims saying, we're, we're not covering that. That's not a one-time occurrence. It's a it's a recurrent maintenance thing. That leak was there for five years. So it's an ongoing thing. So if I was the insurance company, I'd say, no, you're not covered because we cover one-time occurrence. We don't cover ongoing five years when you did nothing. You knew about it and you said, oh, we don't have money to fix it. So the, the condo law doesn't have any exclusion. If the condo building doesn't have any money, it doesn't have to fix anything. There's nothing in the law saying that. The law is otherwise. The law says that the board has a fiduciary duty to maintain the property. Okay? It doesn't say if you have money or not. Okay? It's, so in other words, you have to find the money or get the money. It, it, the law forces the board to take action. So I talked about insurance before. Is, it proper, is your building properly insured? Will your insurance premiums increase due to unsafe building components? So you should be the first line of proactivity. Don't be reactive, be proactive. You wanna do your own inspection. If you're on the board, go walk around the property, ask the property manager, your site manager, your resident manager, their job is to maintain, walk around. Ask, I want to see their actual reports. Don't just ask them, oh, did you inspect the building? Yeah, I did. I walked around, but where's your report? I want to see your report. And in the report, they got to list down things that are problematic and keep it on the list. And your instruction to them, do not remove something on the list until it's corrected and I say you can remove it because you get all these reports that are incomplete and then how do you know whether it's fixed or not? You're gonna to have to guess. If there's a lawsuit, the attorney, like when I'm an expert witness on a slip and fall, trip and fall, or accident like that, I ask, I said, I wanna see all the maintenance records. And if we look for two years and there's no inspection report, we're like, oh, I guess they did nothing. But if a building submits a report and every week there's an inspection report done, they did this, they did that, so okay, then it's, it, it's better looking for, for them, right? They have a defense. If there's no report, there's no defense. It's like he, he said, she said, whatever. Well, how do we know? We want to see things in writing. Okay, so you know, um, a month ago, I was attending this seminar, and I was sitting in the back with this old guy, and, and he said, um, you know, the speaker's like so boring. And I'm sitting here and like, my butt fell asleep. And I said, I know, I heard it snore. <laughs> Global warming, right? <laughs> so then I asked this other guy, he was a, a board member, he was in his 80s. And uh, I actually saw him at the at this expo, he came by my booth, um, and I said, "Hey, uh, thanks for thanks for coming by. But let me ask you, like, when you first started working and being on the, on the board, how did you manage stuff?" And, and he said, "You know, when we first took over the building, I was here when the building was built, and nobody gave us any manual." And I said. 
Oh yeah, that's interesting. So, a lot of older buildings, they never came with our instruction band that said how to maintain this, maintain that. Everybody was on their own making stuff up or deciding what to do. And only within the past 10 years or so, the developer decides to give you a free reminder that has all this stuff, who to call, how to maintain, and all that. Can you imagine all these older buildings with no manual? That's why you come to these seminars, that's why you try to do more research and find out, because the more information you know for protection, the better. Oh, by the way, that same, that same guy, I said, uh, you know, what were the good old days? And he said, in the good old days, we had Ronald Reagan, Johnny Cash, and Bob Hope. And today, we have Joe Biden, no cash, and no hope. He said, okay, I feel your pain, man. <laughs> All right, here's a little commercial. So, like I said, I give uh, webinars uh, twice a month, and it's called Ask Building Expert Webinars, and there's a whole bunch of webinars on demand. If you go to our website, site, you can choose webinars of your choice. It's all there free. We also have um, some books there, and uh, what else do we have? We have uh, websites and all that. Uh, right now, I'm working on developing a microwave popcorn that's gonna be branded. So if you tell us that you watch, you're gonna watch three or more webinars, we may give you some popcorn, right? So you're not bored. That's some refreshments. Okay, so thank you for staying awake. Um, we're happy to give all attendees my latest book as your gift for attending a seminar. Uh, it's uh, yours free. And um, sign up for the Book of the Month Club. It's, uh, it's gonna be interesting. I, I write all the books. Have you heard of AI, artificial intelligence? Okay. I'm using MI, my intelligence. I'm not using artificial intelligence to write the books. I'm writing it all from scratch on my own. So if you, if you subscribe to the Book of the Month Club and you decide something is wrong or you want more information, you know, contact me and I'll be able to help you. Okay, now, um, we're going to go to the Q&A, but how, how about giving yourselves a hand, please? Thank you for coming. You guys can go back here. Stop by my booth. It's 116. Uh, enter a drawing. Uh, we actually have a grand prize. It's uh, a trip for two to the island of my choice. Okay? And I choose Sand Island or Magic Island. <laughs> oh, also, if you're a board member or property manager, I'm offering I usually uh, do a one hour inspection at their building and the fee is $500. So I'm gonna discount that in half, it'll be 250, okay? But you have to be qualified. The qualification is you have to be a board member or a property manager, a resident manager, a site manager. Hey, you know what, I feel so good. Forget about the 250, I'll do it for free, okay? Stop by my book, pick up one of these, and then this is like a coupon you redeem for the free one-hour inspection. Okay. And then, why do I do this? I, I do this to just help people out, help condo boards, help property managers and all that. And then why do I give the book out for free? Um, same thing, to help. So I'm giving away $5,000 worth of books. Okay. Um, it's on Amazon, but then I realized that um, no wonder I'm broke, I give away too much free stuff. But let's open it up for questions, I'm here. We have a microphone right there in the middle aisle. If you want to go up and ask a question, or if you want to sit down, we have a roving person with a microphone that will come to you. And now is your chance to get free advice from a construction expert here. Or you can come to my booth and uh, talk to me there. But I may not be there all the time. So, yes, sir. I'll go first. Okay, so I know you talked about electrical. Of course, we're going to talk about electrical, right? 
So it's the recommendation for the boards or the facilities to actually replace the electrical systems that are 30, 40 years old or first do an assessment so they know what's actually in there and then maybe replace it or just start doing maintenance. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, Mike brought it up. So uh, if you didn't hear uh, the question, he's asking um, about having an uh, inspection done first before the decision to repair or replace. And he's absolutely right. I just went off the handle and said, repair or replace it already, because when I look at it, it's old. So that was in context of, of the um, panels that were Zinsco or FPE, Federal Pacific Electric Stat Law. Just by looking at it, I don't even need to inspect it. I just say, because of that brand, you know, replace it. But anything else, your distribution system, all your electrical in the common areas, yes, I would be the first one to say, have an inspection done first. Call Mike Diller up, he'll give you a quote, and he'll come out and do an uh, electrical inspection and let you know what his findings are. He may say, it's all good, you gotta maintain this, maintain that, we're good to go, or he might say, oh my goodness, this thing is like ancient. I, the last time I seen this stuff was uh, in Egypt in the pyramids. But he'll, he's the expert, so he'll let you know what you need to do. And people that don't listen to his advice, they call him after and say, uh, emergency, uh, we're at such and such hotel, we have no power, so can you like come out and get the power? And Mike says, uh, didn't I like, let you know that you have to do this and that? Oh yeah, but we kind of put it on the side. Okay, now they gotta spend way more money, emergency generator, emergency 24 seven, uh, electrical workers and all that. So that's what I mean by saying, you know, be proactive and not reactive, because when you're reactive, it costs a lot more money. And thank you, Mike, I'm glad you, you brought that up. I'm not, I always want to have inspections done. Yes? Um, to piggyback on Mike's question, what is your opinion on having an arc study yeah. done um, on your electrical system for condos, which is around 35, 40 years old? Okay, hold on, Martin, we have, yeah, yeah, let's see. Martin, you're not paying attention. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not seeing the hand go up. So I can't. Oh, okay. sorry. My question is: What is your professional? What is your opinion on condos doing an arc flash study? I think it should be done because in the past, no one really cared about it, and and more recently, now the code requires. Um, arc flash equipment and breakers for that. So as time goes on, the electrical code changes every three years. And believe it or not, there's what's called NEC, National Electrical Code. And do you know who, who writes the code? NFPA, National Fire Protection Association. So when I talk to electricians or people who don't know about electrical, they go, why is, why is the Fire Protection Association writing electrical code? They go, hello? Fires start from electrical, right? That's why. I was I was the only person from Hawaii that was on the code committee. And so I had this big book that was the yellow pages that were all code revisions and all that. But in answer to the question, yes, ARC uh, flash is part of the inspection. Um, just ask Mike, just you know, remind him, say, remember? So thank you. I thank you for putting on the seminar. Sure. Uh, I've got two short questions and one main long question. The first, can you explain your professional uh, abbreviations by your name? Oh, I don't know. I just made that up. <laughs> no, actually, uh, uh, CCC is, they're all certified. Certified construction consultant, certified uh, construction project manager, certified something. I don't know. I forget. It. I was paid to ask that question. But they're all certified something. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to get my next one uh, CC certified cook. And the, uh, in, we're, we're in a historic district, so like, we've got the galaxy windows. And, and I, I share your concern that we have all out break, we break from the heat. So, um, sorry, I couldn't quite understand. Uh, I heard window, galaxy yes, windows. We're in a historic 
Yeah. Oh, historic Christian. So it's turned on. Windows have changed the styles. Okay. So my concern is about it. I share with you the jobs and falling out and breaking. Is there any substitute for that window? So <coughs> that historic look? That's that, that's an interesting question. So you know, historic property uh, replacing jealousy windows. Now you probably have to find something similar with a similar look and. It, it's, it's there, maybe not exactly, but then there's gray areas. Sometimes if you can't find the exact thing, then um, they would allow you to put something in that kind of meets the same purpose. Because in a historic property, you really can't demolish everything. And when you repair it, you have to restore it to how it looked. But in some cases, you, you can't, right? And I mean, it, it's not necessarily plumbing electric, but it's more aesthetics or what people can see, right? So, if you get stuck, let me know. Okay. And then the last one is, uh, we're in a cooperative, not a condo, so there's always issues around where the owner's uh, maintenance responsibilities start and the, the co-op start, and just use an example like the wall on the nine. And the ones I've attended in the past, Told that the cooperative starts at the wall and the owner starts at the end. Does that make sense? Well, you know, I've, I've reviewed a lot of um, condo documents, uh, co ops as well as uh, condos. And what I look, the, the key document I look for is the declaration in a condo. And so with the declaration, there's a delineation of what's common area, what's considered limited common and what's the unit owner. And then you also, uh, by reference, is HRS 514B, which is a condo law. But in a co-op, is different. A co-op is not a condo. In a condo, each unit owner owns their own unit. In a co-op, each owner owns shares in a cooperative. And so it's a little bit different legally. So I can't answer your question because I don't need to look at the documentation. Every document is different. In the past, I, I could easily say, oh, if it's a condo, yeah, the, the unit doesn't own your, their, their own lanai. They don't own the rating if you have balconies. But you know what? Some condos change that. Some wrote it that the unit owner is responsible. I'm thinking, how can a unit owner be responsible for their own lanai? What are they going to do? Hang off a 40 story building and fix their lanai really? Even windows. I mean, I'm kind of interested in these. And I'm more, you know, fighting for unit owners going, I didn't expect a unit owner to fix their own window on the 38th floor. They can't hang out the window. And they're going to hire a window contractor. And just to rig it so that they can hang outside the building is five thousand dollars, right? So it gets really costly. I saw a hand go up somewhere. Where? Where? You want to ask your questions now, or do you have to go visit? Yeah, ask your questions now because I charge three hundred fifty dollars an hour, so you get it free right now, right? Oh, what's back there? <laughs> Hi. So, with the 504B that came out, if the declaration was done prior to that, and the definition from the declaration for common living areas slightly different, two bad scenario buildings, we talked about windows uh, as an example, um, does the condo? Uh, have the ability to say what type of window, what the owner pays for the replacement? Okay. Do I look like an attorney? <laughs> <laughs> I actually act, what, act like one on TV. But in answer to your question, I work with attorneys all the time. The condo board does have um, their power to a certain degree. If, if there's a a conflict between the declaration and, H and uh, HRS 514B, then your, the association legal counsel has to give you a, an opinion. I can't give you an opinion on that, but I can say that, and I'm on three condo boards myself personally. Um, we haven't had to change too much. We just go by whatever the language is in the, in the 
condo docks, but it, your, your board does have power to make changes, and the board does have the power to come up with a design. And if the board, that's part of an architectural design review committee, or if the board wants to be the committee, fine, but the board has to come up with designs. You can't just tell a unit owner, oh, uh, you need to replace the windows, and the, the unit owner's like, okay, with what? So if the board is required with the replacement, the board should have maybe one or two types of windows that are already approved as far as design, and maybe even contractors that can install those windows just to help the unit owner out. You can't just throw them to the wolves. You gotta say, replace the windows. Here's what kind of windows are approved. Here's the design, and then you guys go from there. What yeah. if the owner wants to change it, but the board does not? Then the owner, then the owner stops until the board decides, right? If it's a safety issue, the owner can go back to the board and say, my windows are falling out, they're old, the glass isn't safety glass. I, I want to appeal to the board to approval, to get approval to replace my windows. And I'm not even asking the association to pay for it. I'm going to pay for it out of my own pocket. I'm going to write the check for $30,000 because I want new windows. Or if you have leaks coming in. So there's different ways, but you may be stuck if the board says, oh, we, don't, we don't agree. Right? If you're going to replace your windows and it's of like kind and it looks the same, I don't see why the board uh, would not agree. I mean, they're almost they're almost forced to agree because you're not you're not changing the design. Now, if it's jealousies and all of a sudden you want to put sliders, they might say, "Well, wait a minute, it doesn't match." So the answer is no. Okay. If you got other questions, um, come come to my booth and. <laughs> I'll, I'll charge you attorney's fees for legal questions. Thank you. Okay, yeah, uh, since your topic is on safety issues, if you have a master blocking uh, some association from fixing their CME walls uh, and they're, they're making you go through this window mode, because I understand there's two masters that are almost like dictators, and so I understand there's a new law that passed that they won't even, at the association meeting, they won't even let owners stand up and the speed, which is ridiculous. So, but on this uh, CNU wall, uh, fixing it, it's a, it's a danger to collapse and injure people. Can you circumvent the master and go to an emergency? Um, yeah, pro probably, but I would, I would follow up in writing because if you're talking about uh, Mililani, Aseko, Colina, um, Princeville, they all got some association with a master, and sometimes the master is a master idiot, right? I hate to say that, but I mean, common sense would dictate if you have a failing wall, in your case, you have a failing wall, right? A CMU wall. So I would just keep pushing. I would probably draw plans and go to DPP and get the permit and, and force the issue because isn't it for safety or is it for yes, a for safety? For safety. for safety, okay. So I don't know why the master is this. It's all about egos and control. No, that doesn't apply. Later on, come to my booth. I'll give you some inside information on. You, you never need one association, but I don't. I don't really need to know. But I, I've I've battled with a lot of them that just didn't agree with me, and in the end, I ended up winning. But. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? Good job. Good job. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to pass out three books in the back. If you want an autograph, come to my booth and I'll uh, autograph it for free. Okay? Appreciate you guys coming. Hope you enjoyed something and learned something and stay safe. Thank you very much.